I took this picture of Bamba Castle using a compact digital camera. It is a .jpg file. Now, Bamba Castle is situated in Northumberland, which is in the northeast of England here in the UK. Right, let's take a look at the picture. As we can see from the shadow areas, it's looking just a little bit blocked. The castle itself is looking just a little bit hazy and lacklustre. But what we're going to do in this video is rather than improve it in Photoshop Elements, we're going to take this JPEG file into Camera Raw. Right, let's make a start. We're going to come up to File. We're going to go down to Open in Camera Raw. Now, when you click on this, you need to navigate to a folder where you've got your JPEG files. Just to make life a little bit easier, I've put mine on the desktop. This is the image. We're now going to click on Open. And there it is, we've now arrived in Camera Raw. Now, the settings that I tend to use with this is exactly the same if I'm using Camera Raw and if I'm using Lightroom, because yes, of course, you can take JPEG files into Lightroom and you can process them as well. So let's first of all, we're gonna start off with the shadow slider. I'm gonna move this across to the right-hand side. And as we move it over, look at those shadows opening up, just backing up into that area there. I'm looking around here in particular, perhaps just backing it up very, very slightly into that position will do nicely. Next, let's head up to the highlights. With the highlights, we're gonna move it in the opposite direction. So we're gonna take it to the left. And as I move it to the left, you'll notice the cars are becoming a little less hazy. Something like that there would be pretty good. Right, next. Let's have a look at the histogram. Now, it's very easy just to come straight down to the exposure slider, and as you move the exposure slider around, taking it to the right, you make it very bright. Taking it to the left, you make it very dark. Double click on any of the sliders. As you double click on the sliders, you'll notice the way it resets itself. But this is moving the center part. If you notice, it's going from here to here. That's the bulk of it being moved across. Let me just reset that for a second. What we need to do is make sure we've got a full range of pixels. And the range of pixels is going to start from the whites over on the extreme right. It then comes into the highlights. You've then got the rest of these pixels, which then come into the shadow areas, which then go over onto the extreme left into the blacks. So let's start off with the whites. I'm going to click on this slider as we move it across. Look at the way the histograms making its way over and when it reaches a certain stage which is there you'll notice changes color it goes from black to a magenta color now if i just click on this little square you'll notice we can now see these red spots this is showing us where it's starting to clip in the highlights let's take this over even further i'm going to take it still magenta taking it all the way it has now turned white if i just switch this off for the moment where we've had those red areas, this is where it is now clipped in the highlights. In other words, there are no pixel details. So we're going to back this up, switch it back on so we can see what we're doing. Right, and I'm going to back this up into this area here. It's now turned black. We've still got a few little red spots there. Not going to worry too much about that. Let's just switch it off for the moment. I'm going to leave it like that, perhaps just backing it up a touch or two more. That will do nicely. Right, repeating it for the blacks, this time taking it to the left. And as we move it across, it goes straight to uh, red. And if I just switch that on, a few tiny little blue spots there in the shadow area, taking it all the way. Now where you've got the blues, if I just switch this off for a second so you can see it, this is where it is now clipped in the blacks. In other words, there are no pixel details here at all. So let's back this up. Watch as I back it up. Look at the histogram, the way that spike suddenly starts to reduce. It's now gone to red, gone to yellow. And if I just take it all the way into blacks, that will do nicely. Right. So we've now got a full range of pixels from black through to white. Coming to the exposure slider, if I move this to the right, we brighten the image up. If I move it to the left, we darken the image down. We go into the minus. I'm going to take it into that area there. What have I got? I've got uh, zero or minus, should I say, 0 0.15. Just go back to 10. 
there I think that looks better like that right coming down we're going to give it a little bit of clarity I'm going to move the clarity slider across to the right hand side that just increases the contrast around certain parts of the picture you can see it also makes it a little bit uh, sharper looking as well so moving the clarity slider into this part that looks pretty good great stuff right uh, looking at the picture I'm not so sure it is completely horizontal. So let's pick up the horizontal tool or the straightening tool. I'm going to click on the top wall here. So I'm just going to place that edge right on the corner, lifting it up, bringing it over onto this area here. And when I release it, you can see there's the crop tool. Look at that little bit of a wedge there. So you can see it is out in the, uh, the horizontal lines. Looking at the image as well, do I need this much space on the right hand side? So let's bring the crop tool in to that area there. That would be pretty good looking around the image. Now if I double click, there it is. That looks better, which has made me wonder. What about, uh, yeah, I've got so much space here. Do I need that? Let's go back to the crop tool because there's something else I want to show you. In Camera Raw and Lightroom, when you go back to the crop tool, the original picture is still there. So don't worry if you want to change your mind. If you think, no, I've made the wrong crop, wrong adjustment, you can come back. You can change it. I'm going to put it into this position here. Let's just pull it out a little bit more. No, I can't because it's on the bottom. I can pull it out just a touch that will do nicely now when i double click yeah i think that makes a stronger image just switching the preview off and on you can see that's what we started off with that's what we've now got so that looks pretty good like that looking around the image let's take it into photoshop elements we're going to click on the open image button here in we pop great stuff taking a look with the original there it is you can see we got those block shadow areas castle looking a little bit hazy and if we come to this one the castle is now the the focal point we got a lot more impact with the picture we can see the uh, the shadow areas here something i would like to do i'm going to come up to the adjustment layers we're going to go for let's go for hue saturation with hue saturation i'm going to go to master i'm going to pick yellow because i'd like to give the seaweed here just a little bit of a shot so let's pick up the eyedropper tool so we can target the color exactly i'm going to click on that so i've now got this we can take the saturation up as i take the saturation up notice the way it's affecting the yellows here it's affecting the yellows on the there and on the beach not going to worry too much that will do nicely great stuff right let's just close that down you'll notice we got a mask I'm going to use a shortcut, which is Command I or Control I. Command I or Control I is going to invert the mask. You'll notice how that saturation has now disappeared. I've got white as a foreground color. Let's pick up the paintbrush. Don't forget we got a black mask, so we need to paint with white. I can now go over that and we can just bring back the saturation on this part of the picture, being very selective, but there it is. Something else I like to do, if you've got a clear blue sky or the image is still looking just a little bit on the hazy side, is we're going to put in a new empty layer. Right, we're going to come over to the toolbox. First of all, make sure you have got the default colors of black and white. Any other colors, press D on the keyboard to restore your default colors. Pick up the gradient tool. Under tool options, make sure, no, not radial, it has to be the linear gradient. So make sure you click on this little icon here. Coming over to the gradient editor. Now with the gradient editor, it will not work with the foreground to background. In other words, the black to the white. It has to be foreground to transparent, where you can see that checkerboard effect. Let's click on OK. Let's fold this down out of the way. I'm going to bring my cursor into the image here. I'm going to click down. I'm going to hold down shift on the keyboard. Holding down shift ensures I've got a perfectly vertical line. And as I come down to this area here, I'm going to release it just about there. You will notice we have darkened down the skies. However, it'll look a whole lot better if we change the blend mode from normal to soft lights. Now take a look at it, but there's a little bit more magic yet. If you come to image, transform, free transform command t or control t is the shortcut 
Coming to the centre here, we can pull it down. And now this is a little bit like using the neutral density uh, filter in front of your lens. You can pull it up and down so we can adjust it. I can take it into this sort of area here would be pretty good. Bring your cursor inside the framework or click on the green tick and that'll apply the transform and just backing up on the opacity into that area there. And there it is. Let's just take a quick look. Switching this neutral density layer off and on. You can see the difference that makes to the picture. Don't forget, it is fully adjustable using the transform tool. A little bit of the shot in the arm with that seaweed there, just giving it a glow. I like what that does to the image. So go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. That way you'll get all the new videos as they become available. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.